sexually oriented content. Content. Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Loveline, coast to coast. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. Drew, you just, you just knocked the water down to my lap, you a hole. True. Uh oh. That's. <laughs> I was going to tell you how sick I am and how difficult it is for me to talk through, but Drew just yanked the jack out of his headphones, which is broken off inside of the female side of the uh, console here at Westwood One. The trouble began when, uh, hey, everybody, it's Loveline. Yeah, hold, yes. Hold Start on a second. <clears throat> Real problem here is oh, my chair wasn't here. It was a panic time. Drew, you knocked my water down. It's, there's a Sorry. big puddle now down here. Hey, everybody. All right, let, let's All right. let's start the show again. Okay. It's uh, Love Line. It's Sunday yeah. night. Yes? Yes. Yes. I'm Adam. Yes? Yes. Drew, you're Drew. Yes? Yes. 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 Adam, you're not feeling well. Yes. I feel like <laughs> I got socked in the throat by a martial artist. Oh, nice. Yes. You, you did? Or you feel like it? I may have, but I think I think it's just a sensation. Nice. I, mean, I can't rule anything out. A lot of stuff goes on when I'm asleep, Drew. You know what I'm saying? I hear you. Okay. So, Drew's chair... Drew had the wrong chair, so Drew had to go ahead and swap his chair out. We have a little fundamental problem here, which is uh, Drew's chair... I don't know why this happens to Drew and it doesn't happen to me, but the arms of his chair are just low enough to slide under the console when the weight of Drew is on the chair, depressing right. the chair. Right. So then when he stands up, the chair comes up and it gets wedged under the console, and lifts the console, and as he feverishly tried to rip out the old chair, which was wedged under the console... And shove in the new chair. He managed to knock my water into my lap. And, and I uh, broke my headphones. I'm and broadcasting broke, without headphones. Broke the jacks off of his uh, headphones. Or as we like to call them, cans, Drew. So, there you go. <clears throat> Brand new uh, episode of The Man Show tonight, by the way. I thought I'd... Uh, new season. Yeah, new season, new shows. and uh, When is the Splitting the Atom going to be on? Ooh. Yeah, I think that's a little later in the season. Yeah. But uh, Drew makes his triumphant return to The Man Show at, uh, eh, I think it's the uh, second half of the season. All right, so, I feel like hell. Did you do anything this weekend? I worked uh, all uh, no. day today. What? No. Here's my problem, Drew. My, here's my problem. I'm having, um, I got sick about a week ago. Sore throat, that kind of thing. Really what it is is I talk too much. Mm -hmm. I breathe through my mouth. I sleep with my mouth wide open at night with the fan on. And then I talk all day. Now, sometimes I get paid to talk, but the majority of the time, I'm just yapping at whoever will listen. But you, you say that as though people are requiring you to talk a lot. No, no, no. no one wants no, no. you to talk much. No, how dare you? I said, sometimes I get paid to talk. Yeah. But the majority of the time, it's just me yakking. Yes. I cannot stop as your fiance, complaining you're big, and yakking big, big about... Big casino. Big cachal. <laughs> it's Italian for noisy. So my thing is, is I go do these Burger King spots all day where I sit in a van and yap into a microphone. And then as soon as the microphone goes off, I start telling high school stories to anyone who'll listen. There's a f nice corollary there to what goes on in this show. We talk, the microphones go off, we really heat up. We really heat it up. Talking. Then we get on the cell phone and talk some more. Yeah. Meanwhile, I should really just tape my mouth shut and be like a Madonna mm. in the Truth or Dare movie. Because obviously I've aggravated something. And my, so sick, my throat... Yeah, my throat has gone from a sore feeling to feeling like I got socked in the Adam's apple. Great. Now, what's that feeling, Drew? That what is, is a, that? That's a true laryngitis, because this is your larynx. The Adam's apple is your larynx, and when that uh -huh. gets inflamed, itis, that's laryngitis. Right. Normally, you get the sore throats in the back of your throat. Which is really a pharyngitis. Cause the pharyngitis, pharyngitis the yes. It feels a little raw, a little yeah. sore. But this feels like somebody put the thumb... Right here. Right in, the, right in the larynx. And, and, and that's where your vocal cords are. Yeah, like your you know, some Taekwondo demonstration went south and some guy gave you the killer death thumb yeah. into the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did a, a, a thing aired tonight that I did called Teen Species. Uh, I'm not done talking. No, well, no, okay, go ahead. Head. Teen and Species. And it's going to air yeah. again on August 30th, 8 to 11, 11 to 2, <clears> Sunday, September 1st, 1 to 4. One of the rare pieces of television I'm very proud of. Really? Very proud of. And it wow. really is a good little piece. I saw it again tonight. I thought, God, it... Is it... Now, what channel is it on? Uh, Learning Channel. <coughs> TLC. TLC. 
And uh, I'm going to TiVo that. Yeah, it's really, really good. Good time, Sergio. Proud of you, buddy. I'm going to watch that. Bridget? Yeah. You're 18? Yeah. What's up? What's up? Yeah. How are you? I feel like I got a nunchuck right in the throat. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> yeah. Just for clarity, nunchuck? Is that one of those things they throw? Yeah. No. <laughs> I got that. <laughs> no, that's that's oh, the Death this, Star. This is the, the the thing on the chain. Right, yeah, the right, one right, they spin right. around. Yeah. If I got the if I got the, the throwing star in the throat, I'd I'd be hemorrhaging. All right, right. Nunchuck is like a Nunchuck like is a uh, bar that comes apart in the middle with a the chain. Nunchuck is uh two brooms you know, two pieces of broomstick about eight about uh twelve inches long with about uh mm, 12 inches of chain in between it, maybe uh, 18. Good How'd time. you miss that, Drew? <laughs> what a nunchuck is? Yeah, everyone knew that. I, I... He's stupid. Stupid, yeah. Bridget, <laughs> for the same reason he explains why he doesn't know what a nunchuck was by pointing at his headphones. No, my head. It's your head. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, there you go. But whatever I, I it is, I knew, I knew you're what... doing radio and you point it it's kind of... <laughs> as your explanation. I was answering Anderson's. All right. But the point is I, I, I recognized where, but I couldn't come up with the, the object. All right, it's cool. <laughs> it's getting older. Everyone's getting older. What's up, Bridget? That's cool. Um, okay. I've already been sexually active, and two about two days ago, I was, you know, with somebody, and while we were doing it, I just started bleeding. Yeah. Like, are all you, of a sudden, I don't know what happened. Are you on the pill? No. Are you on the shot? No. Is your period coming up? No. I just, my period had just passed. Well, if you're either side near it coming up or just haven't gotten over it, sex commonly will stimulate some bleeding. Okay, so is that, am I okay? You should be fine. But it's something, if you haven't had a pap smear in a while, it's worth checking out. Sometimes ovarian cysts and other things uh, like uh, polyps, cervical polyps, these things can be make you prone to bleeding during sex. Okay, because I had asked um, a friend of mine who works at a medical clinic, and she said that it could have been an abortion, but... No, 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 no. Okay, okay. I mean, yes, there is such a thing, but... It's real common for sex to stimulate bleeding. Really, the biggest problem you have right now is that I can see you're calling from Riverside. <laughs> Especially and, uh, with the weather. It's going to go towards 100. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Got you got to make a move, I know, baby. I know. Please get out of that town. Actually, Riverside, it could have been an abortion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That old town's an abortion. I know. All right. Good times, baby. Thank you. Yeah. Here's what I don't uh, understand. I mean, why, why a town would be called Riverside that has no water for 800 miles? <laughs> well, it was like between that and a more truthful Sville, <laughs> and uh, you know, the town fathers just went with Riverside. They thought it would it, it would attract more industry. Riverside in the middle of a desert. Think about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. Ag again, Drew. My uh, my argument about truthfulness and town naming would really work in here because if we did my number system out of 500 cities in the uh, Southern California Riverside would be 503 <laughs> it, you know why because I would leave that space in case two more cities decided to join our little union you know what I'm saying yeah it would be 503 but if you're moving here from Pittsburgh well huh, Riverside sounds nice oh yeah even worse there's probably some Riverside where they live that's nice. Probably is Riverside. Yes. Amber? Susquehanna. Amber? Yeah? You're 14? Yeah. What's up? Okay, um, I've been with my boyfriend for a little over a month, and um, we've done everything. I, I lost my virginity to him. Okay. And um, the thing is, I, uh, I still don't feel comfortable doing things with him because he... Uh, he even lost his virginity before he was with me, and he has done a lot more. It was only with one other girl, and it wasn't a lot, but it makes me feel really inexperienced compared to him. So what? You're a chick. You're 14. Yeah. Wait, you're supposed to have done more guys than he's done girls? No, no. It's just that, I mean, with, with the way that he is, I mean, he, you know, he never pressures me to do anything or anything like that. Then why do you do it? You're, you, don't, you don't want to do it. He's not pressuring you. Why do you do it? Well, because I, I want to, because I, I'm really happy with him. I'm really... Well, wait a minute. You just said you didn't want to. <coughs> it makes you uncomfortable. Well, I mean, doing doing things makes me a little bit uncomfortable because I feel... Then don't... Because you feel inexperienced. And right. And he's going to somehow think less of you because of that? That's how I feel. No. No way. No way. How old is he? 16. Oh, no way. Are you kidding? You know what's funny? I was, I was just thinking... Women, 
especially 14-year-olds, they treat sex a lot like you treat an employee. Right. Which is, no boss wants to give an employee a raise. But it's like, yeah, uh, oh, uh, Roberts, yeah, he's been doing a real bang-up job for us lately. He's on time. He's, uh, he's burning the midnight oil. He's doing a nice job. and uh, He's not very experienced. I'm going to throw him a bone. I'm going to give him a little, uh, little raise. I'm going to give him a little, uh, a little bump this, uh, this week in the, uh, in the paycheck. I call that uh, a little bonus. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's funny. It's like, now, does a boss want to part with more money for his employee? No, but he realizes the guy's doing a good job, makes him happy. You know what I mean? He's making him happy. He's more productive. Mm -hmm. I'll give him a little bump. So it's like, th that's what I was like hearing with Amber. Amber's 14. Like, he's good. He's doing good. You know? I don't really, I'm not really that into sex, but he's doing a good job. I should throw him a little vagina. <laughs> I mean, isn't that kind of what it is with women? Kind of. I well, like, like when you're bad boy, you're not doing good. Like, just do the, use the employee model. Now he's showing up late. He's not attentive at the meetings. Uh, you, if He's, you think about a six-year-old female, that's when they double down. That's the bad boy. That's the troublemaker. Uh, I'm talking also about... a bad uh, job in the relationship. All right. But I'm talking about the guy who's not listening too good. Yeah. Who's uh, not, uh, not putting her, his arm around her when they're out at the mall. Right. Who's out of it a little bit. Right. That's right. right. Let's get back to uh, Amber here. Amber? Yeah. So what's her question? It, she's so inexperienced, will he think ill of her, think less of her, because she doesn't have enough sexual experience at 14 relative to him at 16? Well, I mean, the thing is... Will he be unhappy we, with her? We really care about each other. I mean, he, he wants to marry me and everything. He's already oh. talking about that. Wow, that is like albino white trash. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes, yes. yes. You're 14, oh, yes. he's 16. Yes, Not yes, yes. Way. No, he, he just... Yeah. Yes. We, I think he's different from any other guy that I've been with. Oh, How many guys yeah. you been with? How many guys? Huh? How many guys you been with, two? Well, I've never, like, done anything before. Well, of course he's different. He's the only guy I've ever been with. No. I mean, that way, yes. But I've gone out with a, a okay. few more. Look, you're into the guy. You're 14. You're too young to have sex. I don't know what you're worried about. I, I, don't, I don't know what your question is. He's going to get tired of having sex with you because... No, I'm just afraid that he won't think that I'm good enough. To, to hump? No. Guys hump chicks or passed out. <laughs> As a matter of fact, some of us prefer it. <laughs> First raising his hand up. What, what do you mean not good enough? Like, not, not good enough to, to do things with. Like, he'll say that I'm doing something wrong or something like that. Sexually? Yeah. I thought I just said that. No, she. I, I think she's What's saying... What's she saying? I think she's saying... <coughs> Amber... Guys don't think like that. I, I don't, they, I don't they, know. They, what is they, your they, question? They, 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 to, to even say something like that to two males, we're confused by it. I, the I, fact, I, what the, is the question? The, her question is, is he going to be disappointed with her that she's not good enough? I just because, said guys hump people that are, uh, that are but, passed out. But she out. thinks you're kidding. I'm not kidding. Well, I know that, but I mean, I don't you're have to. You're not doing it. Okay, you're 14. What are you supposed to do? I don't even want to get into what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Just do stop well. it. Stop it. Wait, you're living in Florida? Yeah. Move to Riverside. <laughs> please. Well, just don't get pregnant, would you please? No, I don't want to start. All right. Don't, 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 don't get pregnant. pregnant. Don't start talking about marriage. None of this. What, do you live, uh, does your home have wheels on it or anything like <laughs> no. that? No. Okay. okay. Here's what I'm, I right. will promise you. You will regret having had sex with this guy at 14. Yeah, you but will he's regret so special, that. I know. Bro. You will regret this. I've never met a woman that didn't regret, when they've done that under the age of 16, didn't regret it. Brady? Yeah, Adam, how are you doing? Oh, good. My throat what? hurts. What's up? You know the exact dimensions of nunchucks? Yes, sir. All right. Do you, is there a standard nunchuck size or nunchuck yes, size? What's the pronunciation right. first? Got, of I called them, hold on, I called them nunchucks my entire life, but then later on they become nunchucks. Yeah, they're, everybody calls them nunchucks, but they're not nunchucks. They are nunchucks. You're right. Nunchucks. Yeah, you are correct. This why I should never listen to anyone ever. This is it. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. My whole life I, I say... Oh, God, you are always correct. My whole life I say nunchucks. My whole life until these goddamn idiots start calling them nunchucks for the last 10 years, and now I'm calling them nunchucks. Whatever. How dare everyone. 
All right, so. Is it Noom, N-O-O-M? No, N. It's N-U-N-C-H-A-K-U. Right, but but I guess if it's Japanese or something, it'd be Noon. Yeah, it's pronounced Noon Chuck. Oh, God, what am I doing? Not N-U-N Chuck. Yeah, you want to know what the problem is with everybody, all you smart asses? You read. You see, you read. I've never seen the word Noonchuck written down. So I always just pronounce it Noonchuck. You're, like, but if you're you... like pre prehistoric man. Right. Everything's by word of mouth. Yeah. Oh. I, I see fire. <laughs> I freak out. But if you read, you see N-U-N, and you say Nunchucks. Yeah. All right, buddy. Yeah. All right, give me the well, exact I, I have firsthand knowledge of it. I actually teach martial arts. Uh, what, what is the what? dimensions of uh, the nunchucks or the new right. Normal, typical, just regular old dimensions. They got two sticks. They're 12 inches long, <sighs> and then they're either connected by a chain or a rope, and that's only six inches long. Oh, it's that mm. short. Ooh. Hmm. Yeah. Seems, seems a, yeah, I guess you're right. It's a little bit shorter. Yeah. yeah. All right, buddy. Hey, hey, good times. Good times. All right, 12 and 6 and uh, 6. So uh, overall, we got a 30 inch uh, span with the uh, nunchucks. I'll kill everybody for making me call them nunchucks. Sean? Yep. You're 19? True. What's going on? What's up? I have a question. Uh, I uh, went to the doctor a year ago because I had a lump on my scrotum. A year ago? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, 10, 11 months ago. And um, he just, you know, basically just looked at it. Real quick, once over it and said it was an inversion cyst, and then um, it would go away. An inclu- in inclusion cyst? In inversion. Well, there's no such thing as an inversion cyst. No. No. So you you heard something? I just say inclusion. Inclusion makes some sense. Did you write it down, Sean? No, of course All right. not. All right. So it's let's just say inclusion. All right. All right. Um, but he told me just like whatever you know, wash it, it would go away, but still there and I was just wondering if there's anything that could be like commonly confused with or it's on the testy or it's in it, or it's on the scrotum <laughs> it's actually on the scrotum did you uh lance it no what is it is it is it sore no no not at all is it spongy or is it kind of firm it's pretty hard probably really, it's a sebaceous cyst is really what it is and it's nothing Inclusion Total. cysts sometimes. On the scrotum means on the ball? No, on the or scrotum on the means sack? on the sack, on the skin. On the outside? Outside. Right. You haven't lanced it yet? No, well, no. What's up? Uh, let, me t- let me tell you something, man. I had ingrown hair in the back of my neck. Mm-hmm. You know where the barber gives you the buzz along the back of the neck? Sometimes the hairs... Uh, well, Drew, this doesn't happen to you because you don't grow hair. But for me, you, you see along the neck there... They give it a little buzz, buzz, buzz. Once in a while, one of those things got ingrown, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm feeling it, and it's like, wow, it's got a little pebble back there, and it's sore, and it's it, you know, it's not popping or anything. It's just red, and it's now, sore. Now, let's, let's give the visual here. It's directly on the nape of the neck, behind the ox and the occiput. So you, yes, behind so the you, occiput. So I'm imagining now you set up a series of mirrors, that's and right. lights and an operating suite. No, I. This thing is not directly on the back of my neck, but far enough to the back where I can't see it when I yes. look in the mirror, no matter how far I turn my head. By the muscle, yeah. The That's right. That's right. And what's Big A do after fiddling with this thing and scratching with it for four or five days? He takes himself a needle, and he feels around back there. Oh, no mirrors. No mirrors. Blinded. Feeling around, feeling around. Very and then, courageous. Yes, no, yes, I did... No, I did use a mirror. I did, but I couldn't quite, but I could kind of catch a little edge of it. I could, it helped me a little bit. And I dropped that, I dropped that pin right into the epicenter. And let me tell you something. There's no satisfying feeling like this. There's no feeling better than this. You feel the pin, you press a little, and then pop and drop. Ooh, like, like you're putting it through the skin of a grape. You know what I mean? It's a little tough, little tough, and then it hits the meat. Ooh, dropped in like a quarter inch. Just ooh, sucked in. Pull that thing out, like a porn movie. You orgasm? Right on the back of my neck. <laughs> and I felt so good about myself, and I thought, who are all these nut jobs going to the doctor for this kind of nonsense? This is a gift. <laughs> this is a gift from God. And this is on the back of my neck. I still look at it as a gift. But you get one on your sack. You got one you can get two hands on it and a flashlight, and you can sit down on the pot and no, get a good look at the it. The contrary opinion oh, is... Oh, man. If, if, if it should it get infected, it's an area that the infection can run rampant in hours. Who, me? The infection in that area can be oh, the horrible, horrible, yeah. horrible, horrible. Well, that's him. That's him. 
But Drew, I use and I use the same pan. I leave it out on the bathroom I mean, you don't shelf. Get, you I never like, wash you know, it off. I, I don't, don't do get, anything. You don't get any infection. No, you know, you know, it's not me. People get a little crazy with that stuff. Mm. You, you could go find me a pin that's been rolling around my drawer. I could pull it out. I could pick myself with it, put it back in the drawer, and pull it out a week later and pick myself with it. Do it for a week. Wouldn't do anything. Good times. Is, is that, am I right or not? Is, no, everyone, I, is everyone a little crazy with the, uh, everyone's a little crazy with with the alcohol? Yeah. Yeah. How come I've been shoving pins in myself for, for 25 years You're and lucky. never get anything? You're lucky. You know, really? Nothing lives in your skin. You know, I mean, some people have bad bacteria living on their skin. They drag in there. Ah, good times. They enter in their bathroom. Good yeah. times. Good times. All right. We'll uh, take ourselves a little break. When we come back, we'll speak to uh, Marilyn, who's uh, 15, gave a guy BJ, then went to rehab, now out of rehab, wants to look him up. We'll uh, tell her what to do after this. Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew, everybody. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Oh, Drew. Hmm. I was just thinking about uh, what this great, great country of ours has now been reduced to. Okay. In what context? Well, I stopped at a gas station and asked for some uh, directions. Oh, my goodness. Which is uh, always a disaster because... Yes. You know who I blame, Drew? Yeah. I blame the lawyers. Okay. I know that's fine with you, but here's why I blame the lawyers. Because they've created an environment where you just can't answer anything. Right. It's dangerous it's, to interact at all. You can't. If you run a gas station, you can't lend a guy a gas can. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, you know what? Could be trouble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who knows? The guy could run across the street with your gas can to go back to his car and get hit. Mm -hmm. You could get sued. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Here's the deal. If you don't do anything... The, there's zero risk. But anyway, this chick's behind the counter. And by the way, there's no, no, no greater form of rape for a male than to buy uh, one of those $3 expensive juices mm -hmm. and have it gone bad. Oh. I bought a carrot juice. Oh. You know that $3 carrot and it juice? it comes out like jello? Yeah, it's, it comes out oh. one piece. Oh. oh, it's fresh pressed. It's natural. It's this and that. You get down the road in your car. You pop it open. You take a little whiff of the thing. Mm. You take that sip. The first sip always tells it all, but you always got to go for the second one. Eh, yeah. What's up here? I don't know. I ate an M&M. &M. That's probably screwing it up. Then you take the second one. Then you look at the date. Then it's like, okay, great. Yeah. Eight bucks worth of juice here down the train. But I said to this woman, I said, do you know where the Orange County Fairgrounds are? This where, was where yesterday. Were you? Where were you? Okay. I was in Orange County, uh -huh. and I was on the street that it was on, and I was uh, up the street about a uh, quarter mile. And the Orange County Fairgrounds cover about uh, 600 acres. And I was on the street that it was on, and I was literally less than a half a mile up the street. I said, do you know where the Orange County Fairgrounds are? Because I know it's around here somewhere. No. No, I don't. I said, I know, I know it's right in here. Because I know you get off the freeway here, and then it's like, is it down the street? No, I don't, you, I don't know. You know, I think they hold know. something different, though. Aren't they? Yeah. Something different than the Orange County Fairground. This is a mammoth. Wow. This, this 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 place is the size of 15 Dodger stadiums, Even so. and it's and it's down the street less than half a mile. Oh. You work at the goddamn AMPM, who specializes in selling uh, carrot juice that's gone south. Basically, you've been there, and you just you have zero idea that one of the biggest places in Orange County is just up the street on the same street that you mm -hmm. work on, mm -hmm. which is a Main Street. No, no. Now here's the question: Do you really not know? Do you work somewhere and really not know? Like, if you work, let's say, next to the Rose Bowl, right. would you really not know where it was? If you work next to Dodger Stadium, if you work next to Shea Stadium, if you work, work next to a blimp hangar, would you really, if Grand Central Station, the Met, would you really not know where this place was if you were within three or four blocks you'd of the place? You'd have to know. So are you not saying? You not want any trouble? I don't believe people lie. I just, their whole thing is like, I could think about it, but no. Right. And here's the whole thing, too. What happened to the day when people offered an explanation? Like, you don't get, yeah, I'm new here. You don't get, I take the bus. You don't get anything. You just get, no. Not you, all right. Yeah, nobody says anything anymore. Like, you call places like, the sons are there? No. Nope. You know when he's going to be back? No. Nope. There's none of that. Yeah, he just went out to the bank. He should be back, and now he's going to a... People don't even get to the part, 
Like, Drew, if someone asks you something and the answer's no, or you don't know, is there a little explanation that usually comes with it? No, I'd answer it as, uh, like this. No, not all right. <laughs> That'd be it. So if someone says to you, do you know where such and such is, and you don't know, isn't there a little, oh, well, little caveat? Like, geez, I wish I did, or... Uh, There's a, like, I'm area. not from around yeah, here, or absolutely. I should, but I don't... Absolutely. No, it's just no. No, 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 no. That's everyone's answer. No. Idiots, all of you. No. Marilyn? Hello? You're 15? Yeah. What's up? Okay, well, I was with... Well, I wasn't with this guy because we were friends. You were what? We were friends. This guy and you were friends? Yeah, we didn't do anything. We would we would use drugs together or whatever, you know? Uh, what drugs? Um, well, I, I was with cocaine. I used to use cocaine. And that's what you were doing together? Well, he he would smoke weed. Uh -huh. And just drink and stuff. We would drink and stuff, smoke. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. But anyways, he, um... Um... I had given him head, which was like three days before I had gotten put into rehab. How long were you in treatment for? I was in for 30 days. 30 days? Yeah. Okay. So I got put into rehab and uh, <clears throat> he moved. So I got a letter from one of my friends telling me that he had moved to um, Florida. Oh, no. That's so, it for him. Uh, what? He'll, he'll never be heard from again. Yep. Well, I have his number. All right. I got his number from one of my friends. Okay. But the thing is, is that I didn't know if the guy even liked me. He had asked me to give him head one day, and we were both, like, messed up. <laughs> but I, in the beginning, earlier in that year, I had asked him, like, not asked him out, but I had just told him, you know, you want to hook up or whatever. How yeah. old is he? He's 15. You're thinking, oh, of, you're thinking of contacting this guy in Florida? Yeah. You're, you're calling you, from Chicago? Yeah. How long have you been out of treatment? For, uh, I got out May 18th. And what's what's the plan though? You fly out to uh, Orlando, give him a BJ in the airport, and then get back on the plane, or? No, his uh, his mom still lives here. He got kicked out of his house. Oh, Doctor Marilyn. Yeah. Um, his mom still lives here, so what? He's in Florida. Yeah. So what are you I, gonna do? I don't know. It's, uh, I don't know if they, if he even liked me. Well, it doesn't maybe matter. maybe not. He was loaded. Number one. He's still loaded, number two. What, let, let, this is be a comical answer. What does your sponsor say about this? Uh, I, don't, I don't use sponsor. I just yeah. don't go well, to meetings. Right, and that's why you're about to make horrible, horrible choices like this. You've got to start going to meetings. You've got to get a sponsor. You've got to work a program. You're, you're on the road back to drug use. You want to hook up with another drug addict who's been kicked out of his house. They're just These are just ridiculously awful choices. And it's really your addict brain taking you back down the road to where you'll be using again. Unless you do something to contain that, you will relapse. All right. So forget about this guy. Hook up with your sponsor. Get a sponsor. Give him a BJ. Throw the program. If I understand Drew clearly, and keep moving forward. Okay. All right. All right. All right. You know what? You know what's going on now? Like, when, we, uh, when I was growing up, guys were getting BJs on occasion... But they would never ask for them. I know. He just... Now it's like... Hey, would you mind? <laughs> it's like a back rub. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like asking someone if they'll go on, like, a beer run or something, you know? Like... God. I mean, that whole, like, hey, uh, can you go down on me? Hey, uh, I'd blow myself, but uh, I can't get to my dork. So would it be cool if you just kind of blew me for me? Uh, look at it that way. Blow me for me. <laughs> This has nothing to do with you. You'd be, be sort of an extension of my mouth. Hey, uh, I can't perform oral on myself, but watch me stick my thumb in my ass. <laughs> oh, my God. It was totally out of context. That was a Rocky and Bullwinkle impersonation? <laughs> I was reading a chapter from Drew's new book. Yeah, right. Look, here's, here's the point. Here's what I'm saying. This has now become okay, in, in, and, it, and it's on an island now. You don't, you don't, you're not doing anything else. It's not like you're making out. Right. And now the hand is slid down the pants, no, and you're, just, you're rounding second. You're trying to get to third. This is an isolated So I got a BJ. Event. No, it's like you're sitting around. We're both drinking tall boys. We're smoking a joint. Everyone's dressed. Everyone's looking at you. At a certain point, I come up with this idea, which is basically, when I was growing up, it would have been, let's play Yahtzee. Let's. No, that would have been too extreme. All right, but I mean, it's as if, if we were just sitting around getting loaded, and I yeah. went, you know what? Hey, let's go to the 7-Eleven, play some pinball. Right. And you're like, okay, that's cool. That sounds cool. It, it needs to be even more obscure, though, even more isolated than that. Even more about me, about the, the guy, you know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. Yeah, maybe like, uh, how about you give me a, how about give me cornrows on my hair or yeah. something? Give me a braid. Right. Or would you, or would, you cool. would you make me a sandwich? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> make me a sandwich, please. I'm hungry. We're loaded. Get me a sandwich. Hold on. Are you talking to me now? Would you make me a sandwich? Yeah, see, I got, I got lost. Owen? Yeah. You're 20? Yeah. What's up? Not a whole lot. I've been doing some adult movies for probably about the last seven months. Mm-hmm. And when you do that, they do your testing, your blood testing, through this company called AIM. What kind of adult movies? Like porn. Gay porn? Yeah, no. Yeah? Yeah, no. No, negative. I, I heard yes. Negative. negative. You're, saying, you're saying you're not HIV positive, but you're doing gay porn. No. Oh, okay. All right, you're confusing me now. All right. All right. Uh, so... When, when you do the uh, testing through AIM, you know how normally when you get... Hold on, uh, hold on. How much do you get paid for these movies? Uh, between two and $400. Uh-huh. Do you, do you like the women? Most of them, yeah. Are they pretty hot? Um, a lot of... They're all, they're all cute with good bodies. Like, there's not a lot of the really hot ones. Because right. the, the really hot ones are... They're not doing the, uh, the videos I'm doing. <laughs> what videos are you doing? Oh, uh, just I'm new, so it's like I don't get top billing or anything, and right. it's just like the little fifteen or twenty minute ones that come in a uh, in a compilation, you know. Uh huh. Like uh -huh. you buy one of those four hour pornos, and it's got a whole bunch of little scenes. Right, right. All right. Have you seen yourself on film? Yeah. How's it look? Uh, they're they're pretty good with camera angles. I'll give them that. All right. But uh, all right. Man. I don't. Yeah, any, anyways, back to my question. Yeah. Uh, you know how normally when you get an HIV test, it takes six months. Well, that's, to, uh, that's an so that, you know, antibody screen, yes. An antibody screen. They do something called the PCR DNA testing. Yeah, it's a polymerase, polymerase chain reaction. Is it legit? Yeah, so it's a very expensive and very... Um, it's not that expensive. Accurate test. What was it, 50 bucks? Uh, it depends where you get it. I do it at the place in uh, right off the 405 and the 101, and it's, it's less than 100 bucks. Mm. How much is it? It's like 85. Uh-huh. Well, not bad. And it's, it's not a screen test. It's not a screening. It's not going to capture everybody with this. With the, with the it problem. isn't? Yeah. So, according to them, they've never had a false negative and they had two false positives. And everything else has been correct. At that lab? At that lab. Well, yeah. no, that's, that's off their website, so I don't know if that's just from their lab. That's hmm. At that lab. And that, that's probably true. That's probably true. It's, a very, it's a very accurate test, but it's not a very... Let me see if I get this right. Very specific test. Are you going to keep going very in your career? Test, really. uh, I don't know. It's just I'm kind of making some side money during college. Sure. Same same with me. That's. Uh, you, you, know, do you use condoms? You use condoms in these movies? Um, some of the movies you use pink condoms because it doesn't show up on the film. Really? Uh, yeah, it's about fifty fifty on those. Really pink, huh? Yeah. I don't. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't that show up on video? I mean, couldn't you see the? Where it ends or whatever? No. 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 Hold on, I got some crazy guy knocking on my window. Oh, okay. All right, well, go deal with him. He's leaving. No, he just left. Anyway, the polymerase, the, this, that PCR test is something that's very commonly done, and they, I think it's a standard in that industry you're in. And it's because it becomes positive very, very quickly. If it's going to be positive, you, don't, you, don't, you do not have to wait the six months. And it's very specific. Uh, is everyone into Viagra? There's, there's a fair amount of it, but... They kind of discourage it because I guess when you're using it, it's hard. There's, there's a very big demand, like, as far as for the guy porn stars, you have to be able to come when they want you to. Right. And with the Viagra, I guess it's hard to do that. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, good times. Especially, you know, some of these guys, when they uh, do the porn with the condoms, mm -hmm. they got to whip that condom off. They, they, I mean, these guys, they have to have, they, they're, they're, they're like, they're, that's like they're conducting an orchestra. <laughs> And uh, it's like the 1812 uh, they're the, the, overture. The, yeah, they have a code at the end. Oh, my God. Yeah. These guys are masters. They're masters. Condom goes flying off. Jizz goes flying everywhere. It's good times. All right. Through my throat, it really feels like someone socked me in the throat. Well, what should I do? Gargle it. With hot what? Water. Hot water. Warm water. Hot towels. Hot yeah. towels? Yeah. Yeah. That all sounds so boring. What if I put another pin in myself? Right in your throat. Yeah. Mm. Then what about uh, what about something I can take? Lozenger? Mm. Lozenge? Nothing much going to work. Huh. We may need some antibiotics, but we'll see. Most of that's virus. Uh, yeah, good times. All right, we'll take a quick break, and uh, when we come back, we'll talk to... Uh,
Lena, who uh, acts out necrophilia fantasies with guys. Well, this will be good after this. Hey, Phone number, love line, yeah, 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Oh, madam, that's true. I feel like I've been socked in the throat. Got a little uh, cold thing going on, so uh, everyone just bear with me. Nicole? Nicole? Hello? You're 19? Yes. Yes. You have... Wait a minute. I know. That wasn't the call I... Uh, Oh, you're right. Sold, is it? That was the one you sold. I didn't think you sold anything, actually. I did. Okay. Well, I wouldn't call it selling, but you, technically you I, spoke about, I spoke about it. Yeah. Lena. Yes? Go ahead. Well, see, I have this, like, thing where I like to be a necrophilia. Like, I don't know what's weird. Uh-huh. You have sex with dead people? No. I like having people pretend like we're dead and we have sex and take pictures and stuff. Uh -huh. And my new boyfriend, like, he's not in the same lifestyle that I'm in. Mm -hmm. I'm what would that lifestyle be? We weirdo. <laughs> no. I You're fat. Like, True, what? Please. What True, that, please. What would that lifestyle be? Well, statistically, they would call me a goth. Yeah, shocking. Yeah. Well, and they would call him a prep, I guess. You're 19? Yeah. What's wrong with you, baby? What happened? Nothing. Huh? Oh, come on. Nothing. Nobody hit you when you were growing up? No, I just worked in a morgue when I, like, that was my first job when I was 16. What'd you do? Just, like, tag <clears throat> toes. Or tag the toes? You were a toe tagger? Yeah. Really? Yeah. No. Yeah, huh. <laughs> Nuh uh. Shuh huh. Shuh uh. Yeah. <laughs> Blah huh. All right, guys. They don't take 16 year olds and send them to a the morgue and tell them you can get a summer job tagging toes. Well, I worked with my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it was his morgue or his, his place? Yeah. That's nice. He couldn't have just had a uh, slaughterhouse or a rendering plant. <laughs> yeah, I really wanted to, but you know, hey, for the animals, you know. Right. Selena, so, uh, no one was ever rough with you growing up? No. Did your your parents still... My parents still... never touched me. They always say, sit in the corner. They said, sit in the corner. You're calling from Silmar? Yeah. That's abuse right there. Did somebody else do something to you when you are growing up? No. Come on. So what did you do? So tell me, tell me about the morgue. You're 16 years old. You go to work for your uncle, who's what? He's like, I don't know, 37 or I know, but what is his job? He was a mortician. He's a mortician. Yes. And you go to work, it's like a family business. Yes. And bodies start coming in. And I would have to write out their names <coughs> and tag their toes with it. Uh-huh. And uh, what, which toe goes on the big toe, right? Yes. And which foot? The right. Right foot. All right. And what's the tag I have on it beside their name? Their date of death and I guess. I don't know. Now, if one was on for a while and they weren't moving a body, would you discount it? No. <laughs> you wouldn't put sail on there, have, have a price tag and then cross it out, have a marker oh. right in a lower price? That'd be funny, Drew. Blue light. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, and, all and, of the bodies that came in were going for the funerals. I That's see. I did. did you did you see anything disturbing? I saw a woman who was pregnant that had jumped out of a six-story building, Oof. and she lied out in the sun for like hours. Oh, she was out in the sun because they didn't find her. Uh, no, they didn't call the cops for a couple of hours. I guess they said because that it they was didn't, they foul didn't. play or something. I don't know. Okay, the, she was out in the sun because nobody found her or nobody called anybody. Yeah. And it was just a couple hours? Yeah, it stunk like, oh my God. Oh, I see, it, was, it, was, it smelled bad. Yeah. And how pregnant was she? Like six, seven months. Oh, that's <laughs> awful. That's a disaster. What do you do? One coffin? What? Yeah. yeah. One coffin for that sort of thing? I don't know. They had to give her an abortion, a D&E, before they could... um. Barrier. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so they, they then they bury the kid in the second coffin, or they do it like no, an they autopsy? Just, they discharged it. Oh. It wasn't. Well, fresh. in the eyes of the law, the baby it. is part of her body, right? Yeah. It's her body. 
true. What do you mean in the eyes of the law? That's the whole abortion law argument. That's part of her body. I'm <laughs> just saying that is a that's a bad detail to be on. See, do you know what I mean? Yeah. This uh, rotting pregnant chick who uh, jumped out of the window. Ernie, go get that fetus. I'd, I'd be like, listen, here, here's my plan. Lean her up against the wall. I'll hit her with a fire hose as hard as I can. And if something comes out, it comes out. But that's that's as close as I get. That's all I do. What's oh a DNA? God. What's a DNA, Drew? DNC is DNC and curatage. DNC? Yeah, DNC. They just pull it out. They pull it out. Yeah. Great punk rock band's name. Yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, Lena. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a rough summer. That's did, a bad did, summer. Did that affect you emotionally? <laughs> did it affect me emotionally? Yeah, seeing all that stuff. No, not really. Were you already goth before that experience? Yeah. You were? Yeah, well, I became a goth when I was in the sixth grade. All right. Oh, man, what must have been great to have uh, Morticia floating around the morgue, pulling the fetuses out of kids. I was just kicked on and teased about it. Yeah, well, that's going to continue, baby. Oh. What are you doing now? I work, I'm a clerical clerk. Good times. Clerical clerk. <laughs> nice. I do clerical work. All right. Yeah. That really sounds like a uh, Rodgers and Hammerstein song, doesn't it? I mean, it really does <laughs> a career in comedy. All right, Lena. Yes. Uh... <laughs> I'm sick. I don't have any answers. If you love this guy and you're freaking him out, then don't freak him out. Yeah, stop doing this. So there's no reason, you know, that there's no trauma, nothing you're acting out here. Remember remember the the vampires we had in here? Right. And it's just, oh, just a lifestyle we've chosen. Oh, and then, yeah. You know, then we found out a little more about them. It's, it's always a lot there. But here's, here's what I want to say. Listen, all you a-holes. Stop declaring whatever deviant behavior you participate in is a lifestyle. It's, it's just basically a social deviant behavior is what it is. I do a lot of things. I, oh, man. I mean, I love to pick my ass when I get up in the morning and I sniff my finger. I pick my nose all the time when I'm driving. I beat off all the time. I do a lot of crazy. I do, I do, I do horrible, horrible things with, um, like, my underpants and my socks and stuff. Yeah. I, I pee in the sink. I do horrible, horrible things. If I was dating a woman and, like, getting to know her and trying to impress her, I would not d share that with her. I would not say, hey, baby, hey, you want to get to know Ace Corolla? Ace Corolla whizzes in the sink. Oh, yes. Plays That's by, my thing. Plays by his own rules. Yeah, Ace Corolla plays by his own rules. He likes to scratch his ass and sniff his hand. Yeah, because I'm, I'm a lone wolf, baby. <laughs> yeah. No, I hide that stuff. You should hide your ass, too. Well, we had, I don't, I don't Thank you. you. It was a night when you had off. We had a guy here who'd been through that period in his life. Do you remember this? I don't think you were here that night. And he was saying how it felt so secure to be able to be in control of how you evoked the negativity from people. Yes. And I was here. Control. Yeah, remember that? Yes. Who was that? I can't remember who that was. That was Moby. Was it Moby? Yeah, it was. Yeah, Moby. I heard it today. Yeah, it's yeah, Moby. Yeah. It was Moby. That's right. And he said it really it was empowering to be able to be in control of that. <laughs> yes. And uh, you should be hiding stuff from people. Yeah. The point Everybody. is, the point is, you should look at it for what it really is. It's BS. It's it's an it's a reenactment of trauma. You're re-traumatizing yourself over and over and over and over again. You're not in control. Not empowering. It's the opposite. Thank you, Nicole. Hello. You're 19. Yes. What's up? Well, um, me and my husband were having sex the other night and I went dry uh -huh. and we had to stop because it hurt so bad and the next morning I was still hurting. True and I had this problem last week I believe Wednesday. You, and you did not use left lube. Well oh, no so it's my it's fault. fault. It's my fault because yeah. I'm not aroused mm -hmm. because you don't arouse me anymore. It's my fault. No it, I was dry. Oh that's right. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry baby. Sorry baby. Nicole? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you went dry, and it, it began began to uh, become painful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and then what? Well, then we stopped, <clears throat> and we just we went to sleep because I figured it'd be, you know, it'd go away by the morning. Mm -hmm. Well, it still hurt in the morning, so I went in the bathroom and I checked myself out because I check myself out at least twice a month if I can. Nice. <laughs> and. Um, I try to go and have a pap done at least once a year now that I'm 18. Uh-huh. And it was kind of swollen, but 
you know, there weren't any bumps or anything. I wasn't bleeding, nothing like that. Right. I, I don't know if I should go to the doctor about it or not. All right. You ever get molested? Or no. No, you all right? You just got that little voice. It's not little girl voice. It's little voice. Let's talk about it after the break. Did your parents beat you? No, no. I've had a very wonderful childhood. Are you a little person? Well, I'm 5'2". I'm yeah. yeah. I weigh about 100 pounds. Uh, that would be little. That she sounds like Lauren. Yeah, that's yeah. a little person voice. That's funny because it was like, she, it first started like little girl, but then it turned into just little. Yeah. Which is different. Different. I guess it doesn't mean abuse. Although well, little people do get abused. People step on them, put their cigarettes out on their head by mistake. Huh. I don't know. We'll take a quick break. We'll uh, get back with uh, Nicole after this. Hey, yo, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. That's nice. Yeah. That is nice. Oh, dang. oh, man. Throat, my nose. Man, I can't stop talking. <laughs> it's really complaining. Can't stop. So one thing I got to do, I got to stop talking. Yeah, gotta just keep my mouth shut. Tomorrow. I got to sleep with my mouth closed, Drew. That's what I got to do. You got to take your, like, the throat's b- killing me, b- you know? Yeah, blabbing on. I got to drill a hole in my head so I can breathe, man. <laughs> I can't breathe. And I got all these ideas in there, man, to cause some pressure on my brainus. You know what I'm saying? But I got to let them escape, man. Oh, they're, they're escaping. I need a blowhole, baby. Hmm. I need a brain blowhole. Nicole? Yes? Yeah. You're 19. So, Nicole, it hurt the next morning, right? Oh, yeah. You had sex what, you with got, your husband. Were you on any medication? No. Nothing? No decongestants or anything like that? No. <laughs> and were you, how how long into the intercourse were you before you got dry? I don't know, maybe 20, 25 minutes. Is that long for you guys? Yeah. Okay, and that's too long for you, is the, really the bottom line. And no, m- m- no I've, I've gone much, much longer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, what, is it, what is your preferred duration? Preferred? Anywhere from a half hour to an hour. That's what you prefer. Mm-hmm. All right. Why'd you get married so young? Because we love each other, and I finally found a man that respects me for me. Yeah. And me right. And what happened to the rest of them? Where's my bourbon? What were the rest of them like? They were just really mean and, and real abusive in verbal ways. Well, why would you get involved in verbally abusive relationships? Is there something in your family system that made that okay? No, it was because I was young and I was in high school and I didn't know any better. Then you got a, a string of verbally abusive guys? Mm. Yeah, but there's always bad ones out there, and I found the one good fish in the sea for me. All right. How old is he? 47. He's 28. 28? How long have you guys been married? Well, we've been married a year now, and we've known each other for six. Since you were 13 and he was 23? Well, I was 22. Give him a break. He started dating you when he was, tw- when he was 22? Well, we met. That's when we met. How old were you when he started dating you? <clears throat> I was 16 and a half. And he was 24 or so? Mm-hmm. It's a little creepy. This whole situation, it's something that I, this, this does not... Hold on a second. This does not all fit for What's me at all. What's up with Nicole's cadence, I, by the way? Is she angry? Quiet line? There What's is, up with her? There is something really going on. What's up with you? Are you mad? No. Are you angry? No. Well, why are you so uh, snooty? Why, do you, why, is, why is there a 10 second count before every answer? Well, you're smug. What's up no, with you? No. Who are you angry at? What daddy do? Tell me! We're, now, your, your parent, your biological father is in your life currently? Yes, he is in my life currently. He lives in Washington State. Currently? Mm-hmm. But not when you were growing up. No. Well, didn't we get to? Didn't we ask I that question? The family was great growing up. With my stepfather, who I've known for, gosh, eighteen years of my life, basically. What happened with the first father? Why did he leave? What went on in those first couple of years? I I really don't know. I was about a year and a half old when he left. And what does your mom tell you went on in that whole with that situation? Mom didn't really talk about it. Um, okay. Well, it's had an effect on you. 
It did, not having my biological father around, feeling different from my brother yeah. and sister. All right, um, well, it's okay to talk about that and not pretend that didn't happen. And it affects your relationships with your peers currently. Of course, magically, you chose a man who's much older than you and maybe a good guy, but suspect a 24-year-old dating a 16-year-old, a 5-year-old dating a 16 How do he know you since you were 13? Well, originally... There's, there's a, now, wait a minute. Stop, uh, stop. Uh, I don't care. I don't care how he knew you. Just well, go... Just ask me, the, ask me the question. No, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm I, I can't even do that. Just uh -huh. Nicole's getting on my nerves. Just go get some lube. Just don't call this show again. An asshole you with the long beats on everything. Mm. But that's all that energy on Matt. That's what that is. Yeah, she, I, I felt... Here's the deal. Here's how I know people are angry. I get angry at them. Yeah. <laughs> I blame it on them. Yeah. But I could feel Nicole's... Rage. Well, I don't, it's hard to call it a rage when she's not talking. But everything has that sort of three count before she answers... She's got a guy who's 22, 23. She's 13. He's 13 years old. That's a weird dude, by uh, the she way. She finds a bunch of abusive guys. Now she wants to have sex for protracted periods of time, but is bewildered when she becomes dry. Uh, yeah, I when you have know. sex when you're dry and you irritate things, you will hurt for a couple of days. You don't right. need to see the So get some about. lube, and I don't, I don't necessarily trust this guy. But there was a ton more going on here that she's willing to do. That's, that's what I hear. But uh, she was not going to give it up. And by the way, when I made my first inquiry into this, it yes. was up, family's great, yeah, everything's perfect. fine. Nothing yeah. happened. No one did. Anything. Right. You didn't know your dad. Robert? Yeah? You're 23? Oh, Robert, before, yeah. before you say anything more, there was a call that was on the line that I wanted to talk to. Someone with a condom that broke, and she was, he was asking now what to do. Well, obviously, the morning after pill, Preven or Plan B, anything with levonorgestrel and or ethanol estradiol. Mm -hmm. Take it within three days. What the hell was that, Drew? It's a progesterone and an estrogen, certain ones that work. And it, again, it, it, I brought in some articles that prove some major reviews were just published that show that this was a the predominant, if not exclusive, effect of this product is to prevent ovulation. As I've been saying for five years, it's making me crazy that we had to defend ourselves on this one. It's not an abortion pill. It's not RU-486. Could eliminate abortion in this country if it's used properly. Yes. There we go. Don't worry. The uh, right, the lifers will be getting on board any day now with this. Any day now. Stupid pussy hypocrites. Robert. Yeah. You're 23. Yeah. What's up, buddy? Man, I go to my friend's house and his wife hits him. Right, his for his bogus. Wife hits yeah. him. Bogus. Yeah. It's all right. Relax. I don't believe it. Sorry. Sorry, I don't buddy. Believe it. Sorry, no. buddy. No. Now, <laughs> now, really now we really don't believe it. With the you don't believe it. Oh man! Oh my, man! My, my, my ding, my, dang it! My buddy's mom hit on me. <laughs> my buddy's wife. My buddy's girlfriend. Sorry, Robert. Not a problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Good, try. Good, good right. times, everybody. People hey, hey, Robert. Longer. Robert. Robert, do me a favor. Come on out to L.A. and join all the out of work actors. You're better than most of them. But people wonder how we can tell. Uh, that guy opened his mouth. I could tell immediately it was bogus. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, my, my best friend's lady, old lady. Oh, man, this this guy's uh, acting was worse than uh, uh, Mexican soap opera. <laughs> was horrible. Aye! You ever catch any of that Mexican TV, Drew? A little bit. Those, uh, those folks got a very bizarre um, sensibility over there. I don't know if they're all drunk or they're high or what's going on. But these shows are aesthetically bizarre, <laughs> and uh, I know it's, <clears throat> I don't speak a lick of Spanish, I know it's bad acting. Huh. Crazy women with crazy hair and sequins gowns and push-up stuff with big cans and big asses. Guys in fly, you know, butterfly outfits and bee outfits yeah, running is that around. A, is that a soap opera? Crazy. And they're like in a classroom and a teacher's hitting them and beating them. And what, no, That's a soap opera? I don't know what was going on show. with those people, but listen to me, listen to me. Let me explain the new world order when I'm in charge. <clears throat> Here's how it's going to go. Just one more time, please. Mexico, you will be responsible for zero programming. As a matter of fact, I will have tanks go across your border 
we will crush all of your TV equipment. The cameras, the monitors, the actors Hi. will round up and we'll throw them into the Baja Peninsula. What are we do with Mucha Hidalgo? No, no, all gone. No. Oh, all no. gone. All gone. Oh, no, no. All gone. Listen to me. Listen to me. Okay. We, the United States, a handful of Canadians, will be in charge of entertainment and programming. Then we will put the Mexicans in charge of parties, outdoor parties, outdoor parties, pinatas. Certain kinds of food. Something that involves mariachi bands and margaritas and certain kinds of food. Foods near the coast. Uh-huh. Huh. I'm going to put the Germans in charge of cars. Cars, yes. They will, they'll manufacture all the cars. I'll let the Japanese do a little dabbling of that, but I've got other work for them to do. Here's what I'm talking about, and here's what I mean. You go to a Japanese restaurant, it's great. You have your nice food, everything's great. Then you want to get some dessert, and you can have uh, some deep-fried green tea coffee balls. Uh, deep, it's <laughs> like, I, got, I got ice cream. It's, it's, it's like, no, that, that's not dessert. That's not dessert. How about a nice slab of pie with some ice, ice cream melting on oh, top so, of it? So no, U.S.? U.S. What about the French? Mm -hmm. huh? Huh? I might include them. Okay. And, 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 and some of this stuff, Drew, is going to be... There'll be a, a commingling. Okay. You know, I'll let multi ethnic. I'll, I'm gonna projects. I'm gonna let the Japs work with the crowds a I little see. on the cars. I see. I'm gonna let the French and maybe the Belgians uh -huh. work with us a little bit on the desserts. But never again will you go to a Thai restaurant or a Greek restaurant and for dessert have your choice between deep fried ice cream <laughs> and uh, something called la chakla, <laughs> which is uh, delightful, but it's really yogurt based crap. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You can get a nice piece of pie wherever you go. Drew, I'm, I'm going to clean this world up. No problem. But the Mexicans, no more TV for them. So here's the They've had about 30 years to work on. It's a disaster. It's a call on those lines. Michael? Yes. You're 17? Adam. What's wow. up? Wow. <laughs> I've been listening to you guys forever. Um, for the tune of about, to the tune of about two years. Nice. Nice use of to the tune of. Yeah, um, my girlfriend uh, got back from Bolivia about a week and a half ago, and, uh, like, everything in the United States is, like, freaking her out. Um, uh, she well, was there for about two months, and... What was uh, she doing there? She was, uh, she's in a program called Amigos. Um, they help develop uh, Latin American countries. Nice. Yeah, the Amigos? Amigos. Okay. And, and is she, is she, um, Hispanic, or is she Latin no, no, American, she's or... She's white? Yeah. She just goes to Bolivia? Yeah. Isn't she scared she's going to get kidnapped or something? <laughs> well, one of the, one of the uh, people <laughs> last year got raped, but uh, she didn't tell her mother that. Good times. No, good times. Yeah. You got to expect that. Yeah. So, so uh, she went to Bolivia for how long? Two months. And what would she do there? Um, she's basically the catalyst to get, uh, get the town to start working for themselves and start building up. Because, you know, you, like, you can't just give handouts to these countries. It really doesn't help them uh, do anything for themselves. They, they need, they need uh, confidence in this. They need our high schoolers to go over there and motivate them? Yeah. <laughs> so we, we send chicks from, our, uh, from the 11th grade to countries to, to motivate them to work, to restructure the town? Yeah. Oh, and, no, like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on a second. Yeah. How does that work? We, we take uh, chicks with, like, braces and zits who chew gum and uh, have uh, Hello Kitty notepads, and we send them to Bolivia to get the town's economy up and running again? Oh, Adam, she's not like that. They go through, like, a, about a year of training before they go. And, uh, it's like a work core kind of thing? Eh, more like a preparation thing. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. All right. That, that's bad times, How by does the she way. Get involved we, with you this? got some other countries sending their high schoolers over yeah. to get your economy going. <laughs> How does she get involved with this? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, that was before I knew her, but, um... So now I, she's there's here... A, there's a Chicago chapter, and somehow she found out about it. Okay, and now she's back, and she's flipped out about what? She, like, all... The way, the way United States people interact just, just freaks her out. Like, uh, she was, she was telling me how, how everybody's so insincere in their actions. Like, people put up a, put up a front and don't, don't act how they actually are, and she was just so happy to believe in, be in Bolivia for two months and be herself that when she gets back, I mean, she feels like she has to please everyone at the same time. And no, she, yeah. this, is, this is something up with her. This has nothing to do with the environment. Then she started, she went on this rant about the people well, who are going to rise up against the oppressive government. No, no, not that bad. Oh, okay. No. Either, either uh, it almost sounds like, has she got any other problems? Um, 
Not really. She's actually she's she's a a very like self sufficient person. Self sufficient. Um, her her father uh, she she got divorced. Uh, not she. Her parents got divorced uh, when she was young, yeah. and her father was a heavy alcoholic. And she's been she's been uh, going to Alice yeah. forever, yeah, well, doing speeches, jumping around. She's, blah, 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 she's amazing. Blah, blah, blah. She might be bipolar or something. I mean, it, dad being alcoholic puts her already at risk for other other mental blah, 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 blah. <laughs> What? It's <laughs> not yeah, some uh, something she got some energy yeah, here, buddy. Is really up with her. And right? She she's your girlfriend. Yeah, but you've never had sex with her. No. She almost sounds like she's having a thought disorder here. How long have you been her boyfriend? Um, six months. Six months and two months of it she was in Bolivia. Yeah. And you're a virgin. Yeah. Always know that voice, baby. Oh yeah. Now Wait, what? I, <laughs> listen, how many seventeen-year-olds? call this show about their girlfriend who've, uh, who've had a girlfriend for six months and not had sex with them. Males. In the last ten years? Well, I just mean <laughs> it's 20%, right? Oh, not even that. Right. But yet, I'm never wrong on the voice of a virgin. Right. Never. Now, here's the deal, everybody. This is why the radio is powerful. Because if I saw Michael in real life... You wouldn't be able to tell. Michael might be a really good-looking guy, might look slick. Yeah. Maybe he pumps weights or something. Yeah. And if I looked at him, I could get the, the truth confused. But when I hear him, that... It's, it's interesting, isn't it? It doesn't lie. Yeah. Now, he's got a girlfriend. It's been going on for uh, some time now. He's 17. She's going to Bolivia. Now, any girl who goes to Bolivia, you figure, doesn't got it... So, she got her cherry popped a long time ago. I mean, you can't get off the plane in Bolivia with a hymen intact. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. New government rules, Drew. No, I, I know. The, 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 the equivalent of their INS. They want to check the hymen in Bolivia. That's right. But yet, I knew uh, Michael never, uh, never gave her the high heart one. Hey, Michael. Yeah. You're a good guy. Don't watch out for this one. She hey. got a lot of energy. Hey. Hey. I was just thinking about the Holocaust. What the? Thanks, buddy. Have <laughs> you? The, oh, now, let me ask that you this. Was a hilarious call. Uh, what, hilarious. Thank you. What base have you gotten to with this what girl? What base? What base? Should I be really announcing this on uh, net? No, uh, no. But have you kissed her with passionately? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. She's <laughs> your girlfriend. Bye, 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 bye. Wait, wait. Bye, 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 bye. But, but Michael, she, if, if she starts giving you a lot of um, explanation for why she's experiencing trouble functioning. Or paranoia. Go, go watch a beautiful mind. You can see how confusing it can be when you're involved with somebody who becomes psychotic. You start believing their stuff, and if she starts telling you that people, you know, having aren't who they think they are, don't appear the way they ought to be, they're de deceiving her in some way. That that's, uh, and then she has excessive energy. <coughs> There's all kinds of symptoms here that are highly suspect. Uh, we'll see. Man, Drew, my my throat's getting worse. Mm -hmm. It hurts. Yeah, it's I'll, not yeah. sore. It hurts. I know. Hot towels, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Where am I going to get a hot towel? I might put down the microwave. This microwave you, at, at Westwood 2, you'd pull it out be covered with chili from the 70s. That's the smell of it anyway. Please. Just All right. I'll answer this next one. Here we go. I need another batch of tea, too. Jonathan, 15. Hey. Hey. And uh, hold on or something. What What tea flavor is this? French whore? What is this It, it was stuff? the stinkiest tea when she brought it in. I couldn't, couldn't even it, identify it. It smells it. like perfume. Yeah. What is that? There's not, nothing regular, nothing... Pope meal? No, no. He, he wants, like, Lipton. No, yeah. I don't want Lipton, but, Drew, smell that and tell him if it just smells like perfume. Woo. It smells like perfume, right? Chamomile, it's vanilla, the potpourri. Oh, is it vanilla? Yeah. It's Anne's batch. Oh, well, let me see what you got there. Thank you. What is that, that? What's Anne doing? Smoking pot? Vanilla hey, chamomile. It smells like douche. When does his voice stop working? <coughs> stop working? Yeah. Like, when is it going to shut off? Any yeah. second now. <laughs> Don't hold your breath. Please, uh, hold your breath. Jonathan, 15. All right, I just wanted to know what you know, Drew, about uh, antihistamine abuse. Well, I know people <laughs> use drugs like Benadryl in big doses in yeah. order to induce what's called an anticholinergic delirium. And it's not r truly a hallucinogenic experience. It's just it's a delirium. You're, you're confused, you're out of it, and you may see things as part of that experience. Whether or not that actually causes any brain damage, I don't know. It, it's a, actually a kind of a, a dangerous condition. All kinds of things can happen to you metabolically that can be really dangerous. Mm -hmm. But, uh, what, are you, are you into that? Mm, yeah, kind of. I've just, like, done it a few times. And I just don't want to, like, get really heavily into it if there's going to be a lot of long-term effects. 
Yeah, it's uh, mo mostly, in my experience, it's been the danger of the acute ingestion. You can get into real serious trouble with that. All right, but it's a bad sign when you're looking for ways to F yourself up at, at 15. 15. Yeah, that, that, that you're that into it that you're going to find, you know, hell-bent on finding it. Well, you yeah, probably I called, oh, called a while ago to ask about DXM, too. Well, <laughs> same, same idea. Although DXM probably is more of a direct effect of the drug. All right. All right, good times, everybody. All right, then. All right. <laughs> All right, let's take a break, Drew. Uh, I gotta get something hot on my uh, on my throat. Larynx. My larynx. How about you give me a pearl necklace? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, All right, we'll be back. <laughs> Sounds nice. Yeah. Uh, see, it's getting painful now, Drew. Here, somebody's got a solution for your throat problem. It's one of our listeners. I know it won't be satisfying, but let's let's check it out. Drew. Yeah. Am I, you know, I can have like a Vicodin or something when I get home, right? Mm hmm Yeah, good times. Jason? Yeah. Here's what I want. I, I want something that's going to cure my throat that does not involve any effort in, on my part. Well, you just uh, get some hot water. Hot water? Yeah. Put a lot of salt in it. To where it's like saturated, to where it's uh, not even absolving in the water anymore. Uh -huh. Just lay your head back, pour it in your mouth, and just blow, like you're gargling. It works right away. It's not on the back of his throat, it's Jason. Oh, it's in his larynx. Yeah, oh, it's in his oh, yeah. it's in his neck. It's in his neck, so it's past like his vocal cords. Yeah, I feel. You know what I feel like? I feel like I got hit with a comebacker from the pitcher's mound, just so right like, in the Adam's apple. It's not like a swollen. No. No. No, it's not. Well, I, I don't even think I, it's. I thought it was past the uh, trap uh, door. That, as long as it's on the right side of the trap door, it should work. No. Yeah. No. Well, he's he's talking about if I have a sore throat. Yes. Yeah. Which oh, is well, not what you have. I was mistaken. Hey, buddy, you uh, tried. That's the yeah, important yeah, part. Well, because. No, no, the salt water gargling thing is is a good plan. That's not it bad. Is, I, I heard that from Alaska, as a matter of fact. Yeah. All right, buddy. Okay. Hey, good times, right? Good times, sir. Keep it cool, right? Okay. Good times, my times, my boy. <coughs> Yeah. Matt? Yeah. You're uh, 19. Yep. What's up? What's up? Uh, the question I posed to the screener was if smoking marijuana is worse for diabetics. But I was kind of more curious to know if you don't believe in God, where do you think all this nonsense came from? And uh, to Drew, what's his religious belief? What nonsense? The world? Oh, yeah. My sore throat? What? <laughs> Hold on, I'm singing. Uh, I don't know. Where's anything come from? Where did the planets in the solar system come from? You know, is that you, what you're asking? When you, when you, when you leave yeah, us... Yeah, is it possible for something to come from nothing? Yes. Yeah. I, I think, from, from I think that happens all the time, doesn't it? Mass and energy have a relationship. E equals mc squared, right? Yeah. That's what that mathematical formula shows. Stuff seems to be created. I mean, um, I, I find it all the time when I open my fridge. <laughs> Stuff I put in there comes out in a different form than it was before it went in there. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, it, it gets down to that uh, argument, you know, where people go, well, are you, are you telling me that this was all created and it just happened? And my thing is, is like, you're telling me a guy whipped this up? What's... uh? What's farther fetched? A guy whipped it up? Really? Oh, that makes sense. Oh, now I know. Oh, I look at the Grand Canyon. Are you telling me that was just eroded over billions of years by the Colorado River? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and when you see the, the wonder of birth, you know, he's starting off with little microscopic sperms and stuff, and hitting an egg and then turning into a kid and then growing into an old man. Yeah, it's, uh, nature's pretty crazy. It does a lot of crazy stuff. You know, like whales, they get born, you know. I'm, 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 I think the crazy stuff is the stuff that gets born, like... Uh, at sea? Like, well, the stuff that gets born at sea, but the stuff that gets born, and it's like three pounds, three ounces, and then it grows to like 70 tons. Yeah. That kind of stuff. By, by eating plankton. By eating, by, you know, like microscopic <laughs> pieces of plant particles yeah. that are floating in the, uh, in the, in the ocean. Well, maybe time is the... Is the uh, ultimate 
powerful being. You know what I'm saying? Because the uh, millions uh, and billions of years is what creates these things. I'm with you on that, Drew. I'm just saying the idea that a guy with a robe no, no. Uh, whipped the whole thing up uh, sounds, uh, sounds farther fetched than the uh, nature, time, or uh, what the hell argument. Tim? Hello? You're 14? Yes. What's up? I was wondering why Drew got into addiction <laughs> medicine. Uh, it's kind of a long story, but it was an accident. Just like radio, it was an accident for me, too. Huh. It's just, uh, I he was, was strung out on meth in the uh, mid-70s. No, I was, when I was kindly, <laughs> yes. I was moonlighting at a psychiatric hospital and got to see lots of addicts and was sort of intrigued by the early development of the clinical science of withdrawal then, which had, was not I was not trained on in medical school and no one told me anything about and became kind of an expert in that, and so was asked to see a lot more addicts and sort of gradually got drawn into the field. And it's one of the only fields in general medicine where you can, first of all, be an expert, and secondly, take people from really near death to better than they ever knew they could be. It's uh, most things in medicine, you go from real sick to sort of chronically ill. And it's pretty inspiring work. I, in fact, just wrote a book about it. It's going to come out in April called Utter Hell, if you want to know what it's like to actually work in the field. Yeah. Um, by the way, also, I saw that thing on TLC today about teen species. Yeah, what'd you um, think? You did a real good job narrating that, man. Well, thanks, Tim. I thought that, that was a pretty neat little piece, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm glad you saw that, Tim. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. Kudos to Dr. Drew. Yeah, dude. And the TLC people. That's going on your reel, Drew. Good times. I, uh, however, do not have a reel because I'm big time. You don't need a reel. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you this. Does uh, Superman need a... Uh, Business card? No. I have to think about that. That's right. Thank you. Thank when, you do you much. pull on Superman's cape? It's Tug. Tug, I beg your pardon. Chuck? Yeah? You're 14? Yeah. What's up? Uh, before school ended, which was a couple months ago, I had a couple friends who were older than me, and they are uh, <laughs> from New York. I was born in Colorado and moved here like three years ago. Uh -huh. And they were sort of into getting into fights and uh, causing trouble. And um, by hanging out with them, they basically made me do that as well. Uh, that's, uh, that, that's called uh, bad influence. <laughs> oh, my God, the coffee. I was just almost puked. Oh, true. Let's kill ourselves. We, we are a couple tonight. Um, we're like an old Jewish couple in here. <laughs> Drew complaining about the coffee, which always sucks here. No, no, this is, you guys almost have to make you try this. Look, look what's floating, look at this, look at the surface of that. Look at that. Yeah, that's bad. It's look like someone that. beat off in Drew's coffee <laughs> oh mug. Oh, my God. That's a disaster. Uh, uh, sorry, what are you saying, Chuck? Chuck? Give us an example of one of these bad things you were made to do. Uh, uh, for example, uh, towards the end of the year, um, uh, a girl that was in our class was they weren't very fond of her so they decided to call her up and make a prank phone call uh while i was in the room jimmy they, oh i'm sorry keep going go ahead okay and um i thought you could hear my voice and i was kind of participating in the background but not really and he was continuing to curse and you know call her names that i can't say on the air but where does the and fighting come into this? The fighting was also, that was part of it, was they, we were, you know, some friends would get together and they would want to fight and they would be like, hey, you have to come and you have to fight with us. And I'd be like, no, I don't want to fight. And they would continue to call me names. Have like, you developed wait. other friendships other than these guys since you've been out there? Uh, I kn knew a couple people who were in class. But, why, why don't you work on developing some other friends? Why do you hang out with these jack-offs? All right. All right. right. There you go, Chuck. That's it. Right. True is a genius, right? Right. Yeah, hang around with guys who are doing stuff you don't like. Stop hanging around with them. Yeah. yeah. Very simple. I know it's hard when you're new to a state, new to a new environment, new culture, but even in two years, it's, it's time. It's time to establish a life. I was at my 20-year uh, class reunion oh, yeah, last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all want to hear about that. Yeah, it was nice. Did anybody notice you? That yeah, was fine. I mean, people knew who I was, but it, it was cool. Any of the girls that you uh, lament <clears throat> that you couldn't get your hands on now? Um, Probably, but they were all there with their husbands. But uh, I was just thinking about uh, troublemakers. And, uh, you know, I was thinking, you know, a couple of guys I grew up with are dead. And they died early, too. I mean, uh, two guys, uh, Chris Dittman and Fred Payton. Both guys I knew early, you know, since being Little League Baseball, all that kind of stuff. Fred, I hit a grand slam off of in Little League. Was he always a troublemaker? 
Yeah, he was always a troublemaker. He's a cute kid. They're both like good looking, charismatic guys, nice guys, sort of fun guys, but kind of troublemakers. And uh, both dead. Well, it's weird when people die when you're their age. You don't think much of it. Then you go to your 20th class reunion and you say, some guy pipes up and says, uh, where's Chris Dittman? And you, well, you go, oh, he's, he's been a long time. I mean, and then you look back on it and you go, Jesus, has been like 12, 30, oh, he was 25. Cool. He was uh, 25, 26 at the oldest. Mm. Fred was probably 24. Whew. You know, it's good. You, I mean, it will, you don't, you don't live that long when you're, when you're kind of hanging out by the edge. You can get lucky. You hear about it all the time, but lots of people don't. Mm -hmm. And you're getting in lots of fights, doing a bunch of drugs, doing all that kind of stuff. It's easy. And it happens fast. And uh, it's weird. I hadn't thought about those guys in a while. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, but good times, right? Good times. Good times. Kim? Yeah. <clears throat> you're 20? Yeah. What's up? Um, I have been having dreams for the past two years on and off every now and then where I'm a guy. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And, um, like, I'll make out with my girlfriend in this dream. And it's not anyone I know or I just, like, make them up out of my head sometimes. Uh, are you, I... are you, do you have boyfriends? Uh, no, I don't. Have you ever? Yeah, I've had, uh, boyfriends in the past. I've, like, had, oh, five. Have you had girlfriends? No, I'm straight. Do you, mm -hmm. Just to satisfy my own curiosity, did your either of your parents or particularly your mother ever say anything while you were growing up about how they wish they'd had a son? No. That was never. All. There was never any sort of messages about being like a boy or they her wanting you to be more male-like, anything like that? Um, not that I can remember. Okay. I had a dream a few nights ago that my buddy Ray was peeing on me, <laughs> and it was cutting me. <laughs> like where he hit me with his urine would leave a mark. Like if you hit me with a bullwhip. No, no, it was like like uh, his his. Uh, it was a lacerate. It was his lightsaber. Lightsaber penis. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't cutting into my flesh. It was as if you you slashing it. Slashing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Saber. Cat of nine tails Kuda, kind of thing. Kudasab. Yeah. The mark of uh, Razo. <laughs> Wizzo. I think. <laughs> Wizzo. The mark of Wizzo. The W of Wizzo. Yeah, that's bad. I was up on a chair trying to get away from him. He kept hitting me with a stream of urine, and it would leave a horrible red slash mark on me. You know why? Because my reunion was coming up, and at the 10-year reunion, he peed on me. He did? He really? Yeah, I was wearing a blazer, and he just peed a, on just me. Just as a... No, just, you were keeping it real. Yeah, it's keeping a, it real. remind you of old times. Yeah, good times. So, Kim, uh, so, 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 so what? So, um, I don't know. I'm just like... I'm a little freaked out by it, because, like... Well, what about me? <laughs> oh, oh, that's a crazy laugh, baby. <laughs> Do you have a boyfriend now? No, I don't have a boyfriend now. Do you I haven't, like, had a boyfriend for a few years now. Why? I don't know. I guess they're just scared by me. I'm a little, uh, um, aggressive. You got that crazy laugh. <laughs> you you a big gal? <laughs> what? Are you a big gal? Um, I'm like five nine, mm -hmm. and um, I'm not skinny, but I'm not really big either. I don't think. Well, when are you coming in at weight wise? Um, like <coughs> one eighty five. I'm kind of like chunky. <laughs> one eighty five. <coughs> Hold on, let me do some math here. Well, that's what I weigh. No, Drew, you're about one ninety two. Come on, let me do some math here. Five nine uh, one eight five. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I got uh, five seven and three eighths, uh, one ninety six. <laughs> All right. All right, baby. Well, listen, you sound, uh, okay. you sound, no, you sound okay. <laughs> you sound fine. But Kim, and you're guys, jovial. guys are lazy. The idea of aggressive woman is guys are fine with. So, <laughs> so that's not the reason. I don't know. All right. Well, maybe look into it. Maybe it's time to uh, climb back on that uh, penis. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're 20. Yeah, it's been a couple of years. Here we go now, baby. Let's go now. And don't worry about these dreams. 
That's all right. They're People, fine. Like, yeah, you, you can dream about whatever you want to <laughs> dream about. That's what it is. Like, every now and then I have one where, like, I'm making out with a chick and I'm a girl. All right. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine? Yeah. There's nothing wrong? No. The only thing that's wrong is you haven't had a date in a while. Okay. <laughs> that's what you need to focus on. Yeah. All right. All right? Okay. All, all right. right. Good times there, baby. You're going to college, right? Yeah, I am. Where are you going? I'm going to Cuesta Junior College. Oh. Yeah. What went wrong? You don't sound like junior college material to me. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. I'm not smart enough. Oh, really? I didn't get very good grades in high school. All right. How come? Um, I'm more social than anything else. I'm just like, I didn't pay much attention. I'm like, uh, yeah, I can do it, but... Um, All right, why are you going to school now, then, if you're a crappy student? Because I want to get a good job. And yeah, you're going like to go off. You're going to apply yourself at some point and go off to a warrior. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, baby. All right. Good times. Thank you. This is uh, Drew. You and I never get tired of uh, the chicks who uh, announce that uh, they're about average size, and they're uh, 185. And, then she, and not that tall. Well, she said 5'9", but, I, you know, seriously, I'm sure she's shorter than 5'9", rather than taller. If you had to yeah. make a bet, you'd yeah. say she's under 5'9". People uh -huh. round up, and uh, they tend to round down weight-wise a little. And all kidding aside with the radio math and everything, she, she could be 5'8 and a half and 190, you know, 192 or 3. That's a, that's a fairly good-sized person, especially for the ladies. I mean, uh, show me a guy who's significantly uh, under six foot and coming in at 190, and I'll show you a decent, you know, Husky. fairly fairly built guy. Yeah. Yeah. And for a woman, that's, you're really talk you're built now. I mean, you start getting over 150, you're starting to get big. And <laughs> the thing that cracks us up about it, and I know she's listening right now, and I feel bad, but you really, you got to see yourself as that. We, we have two breeds. We've talked about this on the show all the time. we got the ones that are 5'10", 102 pounds, and look at themselves as fat, obese, out of shape. And then we got the ones that are 5'8", 190, and meh, they're a little big bone. Fine. No problem. Nice rack. Guys, guys still want me to give them a BJ. No yeah. doubt about that. No doubt about that. All right. We'll take a little break. When we come back, we'll uh, talk to uh, Ramona. About, uh... <coughs> hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number, 1-800-LOVE-191. You know one thing I noticed, uh... At my class reunion, uh, last night? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the guys kept growing. They got Oh, yeah, sure, after college. I mean, since college? Drew, I didn't go to college. But, I mean, during the four years after... after, I didn't see anybody after high school. You didn't go to the tenure? I went to the tenure, yeah. But I didn't... I, I went late. Didn't see a lot of people. I could have made this announcement after the tenure. <laughs> if I had a radio show, I would have done it, too. That's the beauty of me. I can rediscover things over and over again. Nice. Good times. Yeah, like my love of pornography and thin crust pizza. Not I noticed... Pie. And, and everyone else commented on it, too, that a lot of the guys, and they asked me about this, too, a lot of the guys grew since they graduated high school yes. another inch, inch and a half. In some cases, it seemed like two inches. Well, you can get four inches after high school. Oh, really? Not uncommon. The guys with the latest pubertal growth spurt tend to be the, the tallest. So the ones who are really tiny in ninth and tenth grade right. will be the tallest, usually. Well, no, I mean that tiny, not the smallest, but that seems smallish. Right. They haven't gone through puberty yet. Maybe right. We'll bend right. Up the Mo most of these guys, yes, the guys who seemed big when they were in the tenth grade, yeah. stayed the same, and the guys who didn't seem quite as big were now all. Everyone commented, "What's up?" Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, oh, geez, wait a minute, Adam. You dated his aunt Diane in the eleventh grade. Did you date somebody named Diane Lowe's grade? I don't think so. Let's see. Robbie? Yeah. Were well, you 15? Yep. Diane? Yeah. Uh, she was a cheerleader. Diane Cox? Yep. Oh, we never dated. Oh, you didn't? No. My aunt told me you guys dated for a little bit. She said, that's great. 
It, what, what a great thing this celebrity is. <laughs> the stuff you wanted to do in high school. In high school, it's like <laughs> we were, people I dated were saying no. No, we did not. Absolutely oh. not. She was like, uh, she said that you used to lift up her dress. Well, that could be. That doesn't mean they dated. <laughs> yeah. Could, uh, I don't know. They dated everybody then. And All then right. she was telling me, like, <clears throat> one time uh, you guys, they were doing their drill practices, and you and your friends, like, yeah. went up and... Uh, Pete? Like all moon them? I'm moon them. Oh, yeah. All right. That sounds like me. <laughs> this is uh, Diane Cox? Yep. Yeah, it's a COX, by was the she way. At the, uh, was she at the reunion last Yes, time? I did see her. Yeah. She's a delight. We never dated, but uh, I always uh, I loved her from afar. Oh. <laughs> uh, and she's got the same hair she did in uh, 1981. Whoa. Yeah. All right, Robbie, that's whoa. your aunt? Whoa. Yep. Yeah, good time. She's a good lady, right? Yeah, you guys are awesome. Thanks, Robbie. All right, man, later. Take, Take care. care. All right, now let's talk to uh, Ramona. Ramona? Hello. You're 30? Yeah, I am. What's up? Um, I have a couple of questions for you both real quick. <laughs> yeah. Love your show, too, by the way. Thanks. Although sometimes you guys could use maybe a woman a, a opinion. Female, yeah, yeah. That's why you're on, not, baby. Not a chick opinion. There's a difference. Yes, uh, yes. Good point. <laughs> Anyways, but my um, first question is, um, okay, carpet or area rug? Do you guys really care? Um, area rug meaning smaller than... Uh, should be, should be... I'm talking about, you know, looking at a female naked. Should be like carpet or bath mat. Okay. Area rug can cover some ground. Oh, okay. No, yeah. Well, Adam, you just, yeah, you just grab it as, as you know, badger like, or landing strip, don't you? Right, right. Not so, ma so right? much that you're like 12, but, you know, yeah. just a little well, fringe. <laughs> yeah, listen, here's what we like. Okay. We like our... Uh, ladies' crotches to look like you ladies want your man's beard to look like. I it, don't like beard. If in, I was about to say, because I knew you were going to get that. <laughs> if the guy wore a beard, yes. you would want it groomed. You're right. You'd, yeah. you would want to sort of see the shape of the guy's jaw and his chin and the shape right. of the mustache. I think that that would be a fair assessment for most guys in terms of what they want. Good times. Right? Yeah. Just, just some attention paid. That's right. That's right. And we're not saying dig up the lawn. We're saying uh, take the weed whacker and go around the mailbox post. Josh? Yes. You're 20? Yeah, I'm calling. I love you guys' this show. Good times, And my buddy. question is, tomorrow's my homeboy's 21th birthday. 21? 21th? 21st. Wow. Okay. And I was wondering if... Um, to, we were going to do some shrooms, and I was wondering if shrooms had any harmful after side effects. Well, here's what I would say about that, Josh. Anybody who says it's his uh, homeboy's 21th birthday coming up yeah. should not be experimenting with drugs. Uh -huh. Remedy for your throat, because my throat felt the same way yesterday. All right. What is go it? Go home and go to sleep. Blow the cider okay. jug. Take a heating pad and put it on your throat, and when you wake up in the morning, your throat will be all better. Thanks, Josh. Nice. I've been telling Adam. Thanks. Heat, heat I, don't, I, don't have, I don't have a heating pad. Uh, yeah, hot, hot towel. <laughs> hot towel. Tell you. Well, yeah, but, good times, and you guys are got it. All right, buddy. All right. Got us. All right, enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Drew and I, we like to think of ourselves as the sort of matriarchs of the, of the airwaves. Right, Drew? Mm. Yes, the goddesses. The goddesses of radio. Can you guys talk to him just a little bit more, please? Yeah. Oh, we just oh, we hung Damn up. it. I like the way he talked. Celebrating his, 21th. Uh, his 21th birthday, and we're the goddesses of the air. I don't know if it's any harmful after side effects. Very nice. Poetic. True. How many times have I said, if you're smart, you can do all the drugs you want until you get average? But if you're really stupid... You slide down to retard, and now you're aft. And God damn it, is that true? Why won't people listen to me? If you're a genius, you do tons of drugs, you become of average intelligence. You know what it's like? It's like you, you're a great natural athlete, but you don't work out. You overeat. You drink a little too much, and you smoke. So when you go out to the park and play hoops, you're still a little better than everybody. But these guys work out, and work hard, and they live clean. And eventually, you guys sort of even out a little with your horrible lifestyle. That's what it's like with drugs. But let's say you're born with one leg shorter than the other and scoliosis and uh, fallen arches. Hmm. Then you start smoking and drinking. Uh, you think you're going to make the team? No. No. And if you're borderline hillbilly retard, 
You can't be experimenting with drugs. You should be experimenting with those kinds of like herbs that make you smarter. You should be. You should sleep with your head in a Coleman ice chest to protect your brain. With a block of a dried ice in there and a heating pad on your neck. You should be drinking like fresh pressed juices and uh, not drinking anything with like any aspartame in it or something. You should treat your head like like it's a Gohanzit. That's what the Buddhists pray to. Saw my little Jung Hee Lee last night. Oh, really? Yeah, that was my little Asian girl yeah. who liked me. Yes. The one girl who liked me in high school. Took you to the One Buddhist. girl liked me in high Did school. Did she talk to you? Four foot eight, Korean, and more Buddhist than uh, five Carradine brothers. Did she uh, talk to you last night? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh. oh she loves me. Uh. Jung Hee. <laughs> And let me tell you this, oh, too. Man, her parents have had a <coughs> just S fit if, she, if you came home. Oh, my God. Let me tell you this. And I've, uh, I've floated this theory before. Uh, the uh, ethnicities hold up much better. Chung Hee, she's like Korean. She never had a prime. But you know what? Looks exactly the same as she did in high school. The bros, the sisters, the Asians, the Hispanics. Eh, expects tend to blow up a little bit, actually. But the Asians and the blacks, all the dark-skinned people, 20, 20 years after high school, look the same. The blondes, they're having a little bit of trouble. They're especially the ones that move to Florida and that kind of thing. The sun. Yeah, yeah. Sun, sun gets you. Yeah. You can see the age. Mm. And on the guys, too. You see, you see the age. Yeah. You, see, you, see me, uh, you see the uh, brothers? No? Look fine. We'll take a little break. We'll be right back. Good times, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Angie Everhart, the uh, super hot redhead chick from uh, Baywatch. Well, I don't know. You've seen her around. Yeah. She'll be in tomorrow night. So, I think she does that little girl voice, too. <laughs> Wait, that's her. Yeah, that's her. Yeah, yeah. She, she does a little lamb chop voice. Yeah. Don't do that when you're girls in bed. It's very naughty. Hold on. <laughs> oh. All right. Angie, if you're listening, don't come in tomorrow night. I'm done. So, until next time, this is Adam Crowley for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. What kind of adult movies? I like porn. Gay porn? Yeah, no. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.